Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great honor and privilege to be here today. I would like to thank NDTV and L'Oreal Paris for inviting me to this very, very special occasion of, on women of worth. Well, gender inequality has been an age-old issue which we are all aware of, and they have been evolving over time and taking different shapes. The countries which have been able to close the gender gaps in terms of education, health facilities, job opportunities, are also the ones which have improved levels of economic progress and growth. Educating women have had a very positive spillover in terms of the overall externality of raising a healthy family. Educated women generally tend to have lower fertility rates, improved child and maternity maternal mortality rates, better earning for the family, and are able to provide for a more conducive environment for child development. Further, countries which have policies that allow women to balance work and family are better positioned to handle problems arising out of aging population. This is particularly uh, so amply uh, sort of experienced in Japan, and President uh, Prime Minister Abe of Japan has been focusing on how to bring in women into the workplace, particularly because of their aging population. Studies also indicate that closing of the gender gaps has a positive impact on the results of companies as well, which uh, Pranoy Roy uh, alluded to early this morning. A linkage has been shown to exist between having more women directors and corporate sustainability. Last but not the least, countries have had greater representation of countries that have had greater representation of women in public life is known to have reduced levels of socioeconomic inequality. Once famously, Margaret Thatcher had quoted, and she said, "If you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman." Uh, Suhel has left. Perhaps he would like to hear this. A survey also that Dr. Roy pointed to of the World Economic Forum study clearly indicates a few things which I'd like to talk to you about in terms of the, uh, how companies are looking at the issue of gender equality. Visible leadership by the chief executive and top management on supporting women, including concrete and symbolic actions by top management, and in many cases, establishment of a position or department to lead diversity efforts have proven to be one of the most important levers for progress in achieving gender diversity in a corporate context. Work environment and work-life balance are very important, and therefore providing childcare options and maternity leave of extended periods is very, very uh, important to encourage women in developing their career skills, uh, some things that were also discussed in the panel today. India has one of the lowest rates of female participation in the labor force. This holds back economic growth. India needs to narrow the gender gap and have more women in labor market to fully harness the benefits of the demographic dividend. Looking at the brighter side, however, gender mainstreaming remains a key priority for the Indian government. Some of the important changes have already been initiated, and of course, we have still the pending women's reser reservation bill, which I think will be a major step. Recently, the President of India also gave a push to the bill and even talked about inclusion of women in combat forces. FIKI has been, of course, working towards women empowerment. 30 years ago, it set up uh, an organization called FIKI, ladies organization, uh, popularly called FLO. And this uh, body's uh, main objective was empowerment of women through, prom through promotion of entrepreneurship and managerial excellence. It has taken a number of initiatives, which includes, uh, recently it has set up a business consultancy cell in Delhi, for potential women entrepreneurs. Within the rest of FIKI also, allegiance to women's agenda is strong. 
Fiki has decided that women and young leaders should constitute at least 30% of its sectoral committees. We haven't been able to achieve this number yet, but this is the, uh, the targets that we have set for ourselves, and we do hope that we will get more women to participate in our various committees. To ensure diversity on corporate boards, FIKI Center for Corporate Governance has undertaken the Women on Corporate Boards program. This is to help in mentoring uh, women who are joining corporate boards in uh, sharing with them all the issues that they need to be aware of and so that they can discharge their responsibilities better. I'd like to end by a quote and then a very, very short story. Uh, the quote is from Mahatma Gandhi, to, co to call women the weaker sex is a libel. It is man's injustice to woman. If by strength is meant moral power, then women are, are immeasurably man's superior. Man can never be a woman's equal in the spirit of selfless service with which nature has endowed her. And finally, Ayn Rand had once said, the question is not who is going to let me, it is who is going to stop me. And this quote is much exemplified by the story of a lady, Chetna Sinha. Seventeen years ago, Chetna Sinha and her husband, both farmers by profession, approached the Reserve Bank of India with an idea to set up a bank to serve rural women. They were asked this question, how can you run a bank with illiterate women who can't even read and write? Today, the 53-year-old entrepreneur has been successful in not only starting, but successfully operating three different rural enterprises that are committed to the cause of rural women in the country, which includes India's first cooperative bank for rural women, the Mandeshi Mahila Bank. In 1997, when Sinha started the bank in Maheshwad, a small village in the Satara district of Maharashtra with a semi-literate semi workforce of women from the same village, she wanted to provide loans to help farmers recover from their economic condition. But 15 years later, she has managed to do more than just that. Today, despite facing over 8 to 10 hours of load shedding in a day, the bank has managed to successfully introduce both computerized and door-to-door -door banking to offer its services to over 1,80,000 women across nine districts in rural Maharashtra. Of these, 1,55,000 women are savings account holders. Most of them earn less than rupees 50 a day. In 2006, Sina, who holds a master's degree in commerce and economics from the University of Mumbai, started the, the Man Deshi Business School since then, it has managed to train over 46,000 women in vocational and entrepreneurial skills, of which over 24,000 have gone on to pursue entrepreneurship after receiving their professional training. Further, to look after the needs of several underprivileged women entrepreneurs, in 2012, Sinha partnered with New York-based Clinton Global Initiative to set up the Mandeshi Chamber of Commerce for Rural Women a first-of-its-kind Chamber of Commerce for Rural Women in India. The Chamber aims to both mentor and address the grievances of women entrepreneurs in rural India. In 2002, she was appointed as a World Fellow to the Yale University, and in 2003, she was recognized as the bridge builder by the Harvard University. So that's truly an inspirational story about what a woman can do even though her circumstances at that particular point of time was not very favorable. Thank you very much.